was crazy. I don't care what happened. But I heard Deadpool was doing well. Nah, Deadpool is, Deadpool is sick. Well. And they're supposed to be the X-Men apocalypse. Yeah, that's yeah. in May. That's going to be big. Then there's... Uh, Oh, yeah. There's this other one, Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange coming yes. out this year. Suicide, Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad as well. Yes, I was not too sure, but I'm beginning nah, to Nah, man. Seen, have you seen the teaser for the new Jason Bourne movie? No. <gasps> I thought I had my demon is back on that what? as this well. Guy has beefed up so <laughs> it was a teaser they released you during oh, the Super, Super Bowl. Oh, Super Bowl, yeah. Jesus Christ, man. Then oh, Civil man. War, uh, Captain America I mean, Civil, Civil War. Civil War would be fantastic. Because that one is also like. Iron Man versus Captain America. It's the year of superheroes. Super Bowl should be good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a good thing. No, that's good thing. Is Didi in town? Yeah, she is. Yep. <coughs> Sound okay? Yeah, we're good. Just uh, don't worry about the camera. Okay. Clemens, in three, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. You know, I'm sure you have been asked this question over and over again. You know, the first single, which I think it's a good trigger for you, it, you know, pushed you into the business real good. Did you feel a bit worried about using that line for the song, Jagapan? Were you worried in any way? Did you get some you know, mixed feelings, thinking, is this safe? Is it going to be good for me? Do I have the rights to go ahead and do this? Yeah, I think, well, I really didn't think about all that before I put the song out, because, I mean, I was just in the studio, and I think a lot of people actually inspired the song. It is when I was trying to put out a song that make people understand that I'm actually Nigerian and, you know, relate with the local people and all that, but as soon as I heard the beat, that phrase Jagaban just kept ringing in my head because, you know, it's, it's a name that has something to do with a very powerful person. So I didn't really start thinking about, you know, how people would receive the song. I was at an interview somewhere and someone was like, I was in the stu like on radio and there were a lot of other artists there. So they were not like, hey, we have Jagaban in the building. And, you know, one of the presenters was, was I think he was trying to, related to like a political, well, he was thinking I was on the political side and he was like, no, no political preferences on the show. And they were not like, no, 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 it doesn't have anything to do with that. So I think I was on the safe side because, you know, everyone knows Senator Bola, Metin Nibu is Jagaban, but my song Jagaban is just, you know, it's, it's, it's not like it's about him or anything. It's about something totally different. But yeah, I got, I got people calling me and saying that, yo, why this? Are you a supporter of this? Are you a son? I just said, no, I just, I just did a song, how I was feeling. So, and it surpassed everyone's expectations. And I guess that's a really, really good thing because we all expected the song to do really great and it did even greater. So. Okay. Has the senator commented to this? Have you performed the song at an event where he was at? And have you gotten anything from his side? I, th I think the closest I've been to him was at the Afrima Awards. He was like sitting like three rows in front of me. So I didn't know it was even him until he got up to receive a recognition award. And as soon as he received the award, he just left. So, but I still haven't received a call from him. I've been, a lot of people have been saying, uh, you know, we're going to, he needs to meet you, this, that, this. I'm just, I, I know it's never too late. I just wish I put out the song by the election period. It would have been a really, really great thing, but it's all good. It's all good. Okay. Now, the growth from when the single came out till date, right? A lot has happened for you. There's a remix out with, you know, oh, other entertainers. There's yeah. a new single out. Now, this growth, do you think it's way too fast for you? You can't comprehend right now. I mean, initially, because I think from, I put out a single before Jagaban, that was Kondo with Pataranki. So even from that song, you know, things were just like, it, I think it started out like uh, a snowball. It was just gaining traction and kept growing. So at first, when I dropped the single with Pato Rankin, I think the level of popularity increased. People were starting to take attention. Okay, who's this guy? Who's this dude? Then Jagaban came and it just, you know, it just blew everybody's mind. So I think a lot of people say, you know, I'm growing really fast. Like, you know, this doesn't happen this way and all. But I think... I've actually been putting out music since 2012, but I think 2015, 
my label, we actually got it right because we took some time off because I was a young artist, I was new to the industry and the label was just starting up, they were also new to the industry. So we went back to the drawing board, you know, reshuffled, made some changes and I think me coming back in 2015 and me experiencing this much growth shows that the time I took off was, you know, it was, it was well taken because a lot of people tend to believe that, you know, if you haven't been hustling for seven years or ten years, if you haven't, you know, been a studio rat and all, I just think that we need to, you know, change that mentality because a lot of people just seem to believe that, okay, if it's not happening now, I can still keep struggling for the next ten years. But I don't, I don't see any reason why you want to limit yourself because as a young person, one of, one of the things I have working for me is that I'm young and, you know, I'm vibrant and I have this energy. So, I mean, I'm, I'm looking to make the best use of it. Like, I might even put out an album this year because I've been talking about it, but everyone's like, no, it's not the right time. But, I mean, if you can do something, then I don't see any reason why you shouldn't do it. So, the fact that I'm growing this fast is, is not just my doing alone. Aside from the fact, I know God has blessed me because this doesn't happen overnight, but... I mean, everything, everything that happens, heaven helps those who help themselves. So this, it just goes to show that what you put in is definitely what you're going to get out of whatever venture you go into. Okay. Now, the acceleration, has it brought good friends or bad friends? Has it got positive, negative, or, you know, in terms of the critics, what people are saying, has it been positive or negative? I mean, I'll say it's been, it's been very positive, but definitely you're only going to recognize the positivity when you experience some negativity, because... For a fact, a lot of people are expecting me to change from the person I was before I became very popular. A lot of people are like, some people might call me, I might not pick my phone, and they're like, hmm, you don't the carry shoulder and all that. But, I mean, it's been fun. I actually have fans now. I remember a time when my fans used to be people I knew firsthand and my family members and all, but now I have people that I don't know that are just willing to come out and associate themselves with my music. So, I mean, that's a very, very good positive. And on the other hand, the fact that everything is happening for me really quickly, a lot of people don't want to, you know, recognize the hard work that the label, the management, and the artists is putting in. So I've been termed a one-hit wonder so many times. But I think the new single is beginning to, you know, a lot of people are beginning to pay attention and like, okay, this is actually a great song. We know this guy's not a one-hit wonder. Because as a young artist that has one-hit song, it's easy for people to term you a fluke or a one-hit wonder, and they're just like, let's see what he's going to do next. Even when you put out another hit song, there's always going to be people that are like, mm, it's, it's just fluke. So for me, I just keep working. Everyone on my team is working hard, and the hard work is paying off. So I guess that's, that's pretty much a very, very good thing. Have you gotten some negative vibes from you know, colleagues in the music business who are already looking at you and like, okay, he's beginning to shine, and you know, they just don't want you to grow? Have you had any such situation? Mm, I wouldn't say I've had any directly, but I mean, as I don't know, uh, I feel some people might feel threatened. I don't see any reason why anyone should feel threatened because I feel the industry is big enough for everyone to eat. It's big enough for everyone to, you know, smile at the end of the day. So I wouldn't feel threatened if there was a new kid on the block doing great stuff, as long as I keep doing what I'm supposed to do. But I mean, only God sees everyone else's heart. I don't know. I haven't received any negativity firsthand, but you know, there's always you're always going to hear talks and you're always going to hear stuff. But I just, I just choose to stay focused and focus on music. That's that's the main aim for now. Okay. Now, your style, from your hair to what you look like physically, you know, represents something. Can you explain that to you, to us? You know, what does this whole look like? What is it about? What's the definition of this look? Because when I see you personally, I have you know, this thing in my mind, but what's the definition of this look of yours? I mean, those, those that know me, like growing up, even from when I was a child, my nature has been highly rebellious. I've, I've been known to be somebody that I do not like doing what everyone else is doing. Because, I mean, if everyone is doing one thing, then nobody's doing anything. So my look first, the reason why I have dreads, when I started out doing music in 2012, I didn't have dreads. I'm someone that, if at the end of 2013, you have told me that, Yo, guy, you're going to be a raster, and I'll be like, nah, man, that's not me. But somewhere along the line, I just, I just, you know, I was looking at a lot of stuff that was going on. There's, there's this, this, um, the way people see, the way people treat physical appearances these days. For example, I have tattoos and I have dreadlocks. Most people hear me speak and they say, wow, you sound quite intelligent for someone that looks. But I think it just goes to show that it's, it's way beyond the way people look. It's way beyond the way people dress. It's, 
at the end of the day, it all comes down to what you have inside you. Because, I mean, you could see, you could watch the news and you see serial killers and you see robbers and you see thieves. And I don't think that it's, it's, it's not down to the look. If you see serial killers, I watch crime and investigation a lot, you know that you would not see a tattered up person. Because most people don't know that. People that, you know, how would I put this now? I don't know what they call people like me, you know, that have this look, but we really don't have any reason to be drawn to violence, negativity, or conflict in any way, or just about peace and all. So people look at me and until they hear me speak, they're like, wow, you sound educated. Yes, I'm educated, I'm still in school. So, But my appearance does not have anything to do with what happens or what is going on in my head. Not saying that I don't, I, I, I could look anyhow and the fact that I have dress, I take good care of my hair, I have tattoos, I take good care of my skin. So it just goes to show that I'm just like every other person out there, looks irrespective. Okay, but do you think also this is a reflection of your art? Like when I see this, I can tell this person is a musician or an artist. Do you think it also reflects that? Yeah, it, it does because aside the fact that I do music, I also have this genuine appreciation for art, be it creative art or, you know, spoken word or different different kinds i'm just i'm just someone that i i appreciate anything that is beautiful sound pictures imagery cinematography and all that i'm i'm someone that's really in depth in the arts not just because i'm a musician or a rapper i'm really into the arts as a whole okay now um let's also look at the new single oh my lady is that, is that <laughs> linked to another name that you know we're yeah wondering why Son of um, analogy. Right? So tell us. <laughs> yeah, um, my dad. My dad is late now, but he was an analogy before he passed on. And those that don't you know, I go by the tag of YC, the only Oma analogy you find in church every Sunday. Now a lot of people, even like just before I got on the interview on social media, someone was asking me, "Are you really Oma analogy?" Yes, I'm actually. My dad is an analogy, but I grew up with my mom, and she is Christian, so I'm a Christian by religion and all. So the fact that I say the only Omar Alaji you find in church every Sunday, because once people hear Omar Alaji, they just believe, yeah, okay, this guy's a Muslim. But not saying that um, I'm segregating against anything. It's just that I was brought up in the Christian way. So for me, it's just an AKA, the only Omar Alaji you find in church every Sunday. Because I know there are other Omar Alajis you find in church every Sunday, but I'm, I'm the first one to come out and say the only Omar Alaji you find in church every Sunday. But do you go to church like this? Yeah, I do. People stay a lot. How do you deal with that? Uh, I'm, 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 I'm used to it, but I just, I just try to not, you know. I think if I was not a popular person, it would bug me. Like, I would feel some type of way. But I think most people see me, even when I go to church, they see me in church and they stare. And the next thing, someone walks up to you and is like, can I get a picture? And you're like, okay, the reason why you're staring is actually positive. But when someone is just staring at me like, what's this person doing in church looking like this then? I would, I would feel some type of way about it, but I wouldn't act on it. I will just be like, well, that's, it's, it's, it's your own level of thinking. You might be shallow-minded and all, but I just feel it, it goes way beyond physical appearance. What about your mom? What's her take on your look? We argue a lot. Talk to me about the experience, your mom accepting you. Yeah, I mean, because when, when I started growing my hair, because I'm always someone that's touching my hair, so I just, most of the time, unconsciously, I'm twisting my hair. So when I was staying with my mom, and anytime I'm doing that, she would just walk up to me and slap me and be like, stop, I've told you to cut this hair, you don't cut this hair, I've told you to cut this hair. So I think it got to a point where she saw that, okay, my hair is really, really important to me. Like, it's not just, it's dreads, but it's not like rough or anything. I visit the barber, I take care of it and all that. So... She just let that one slide. And when I started getting tattoos, I'd already gotten about two, three, four tattoos before she had noticed because I was already, I was always hiding it. I was always hiding it until the day she eventually saw it. And I was just like, she already knew. Like, even when I was a kid, I was someone that would take markers and draw on my skin. So sooner or later, she knew it was bound to happen. But she understands that it's not a reflection of my person or anything. So it's, it's really an understanding situation. But I know deep down she's waiting for the day I'll call her and say I've caught my hair. But okay. Now, talk to me about what's the plan for this year in terms of your music career? 
Well, this year I have been recording a lot of music. I've done a couple of collaborations. So I'm looking at putting out a body of work, either an album or an EP. So basically, there's definitely going to be a lot more music from YC this year, more collaborations, international collaborations, um, music videos. Hopefully, the, the endorsement we've been waiting for all these years comes this year. And it's, it's just work, work, work for me, and also school as well. It's what really. I'm I'm studying marine biology in the University of Lagos, and it's it's it's. I will I will be lying if I say it's been rosy, but I think my management, you know, they help ease the burden a lot. Cause when I have to be in school, they you know they hold the fort, they handle everything that comes with the business. So, but most times I'm like as a musician, most of what I have to do happens at night, so I could go for shows. And I could still go for class the next morning. But I mean, it's really tiring, but you know, it's the life you chose. It's one of the perks of the job. But so far, so good. I'm in my third year. Hopefully, I'm done when I'm supposed to be done. Thank you very much, YC. Thank you. Did you enjoy the interview? I mean, well, very well. Do another one some other time. Dev, anytime.